Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery and today we've got a full small details review of the Brian Brown Jaeger M and not just any old one. This one was heavily customized by Fanatic Edge. It is so freaking gorgeous. This is a production knife made by Rayot and it is based on a, a custom knife that Brian Brown made. And this particular one was sent to me by Brian Brown directly. He also sent me one of these Raptors to check out. And I said in the video for this, just how incredibly surreal it is to be able to say that Brian Brown sent me these knives. Um, I'm a tiny channel and that he didn't, he doesn't really know me, you know? So that's, just such an incredible, both like trust, I believe these are his personal knives, but also just such a generous thing for him to do. So huge, huge thank you to Brian for sending me these, uh, these my way. Um, I did get in on the production run of this one. The, the third batch is coming out in, I think he said April or May, but I didn't get in on this one. So this was a, a wonderful opportunity for me to actually get to try it out. I was a little bit nervous when I got into that production run, pre-order on this, because I, I I didn't know if it was going to be too big for me. I didn't know if I'd like it in hand, anything like that. And it's a pretty expensive knife. Um, and boy, now that I have it in hand, I am so freaking glad that I did. This knife is quickly becoming one of my absolute favorite knives. Backing up a little bit, who is Brian Brown? Brian Brown is a custom knife maker from Mississippi. He's been making knives for six or seven years now, and he got started just by watching YouTube videos and figuring, you know, I'd like to try that myself. And that is so freaking cool and inspiring. That is um, every kind of armchair knife maker's pipe dream that they would someday be able to just start making knives and he did it and man did he show not only does he have a talent for it but a really great talent for design one of the things that makes this so popular is that it's 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 not just really kind of um, iconic looking. It really stands out and is visually striking but it's also so ergonomic and functional and we'll talk about all of that in a moment. Um, the first run of production knives. So he eventually, so he had his his custom Jaeger, and he made a mini version of that, a regular version, and I think an XL. And so the first time he did a production run, he did it through Wii. And um, when he did the second run, he did it through Rayot. And he said in an interview uh, that that Bri uh, by the way, if you want to go see a really great overview of him as a person and just see how earnest and everything he is, um, go watch Bearded Gear's uh, three and a half hour long podcast with him. It's spectacular. But anyway, he said that the reason why he switched to Rayot for the second run is not because anything wrong with we as a company or anything wrong with the versions that they made. It's just that he wanted to be able to do more different variations on a small batch size. And we didn't want to have that much variety at that low of production size. And he's a tiny single person shop guy. And so he couldn't afford to do the kind of numbers that we wanted for the number of variations that he wanted. Um, so this this is part of, from the second, I believe, this is, yeah, this has to be, this is from the second batch that was done by Rayot. The third batch is, a, uh, is coming out in April and May, like I said, and that's the one that I got in on. Uh, but even then and now, there's this other way that you can kind of get these, and that's through Fanatic Edge. This particular knife has been heavily modified by a guy named Andrew who goes by Fanatic Edge. My understanding is that he started as kind of a like anodization, sharpening, spa treatment-y kind of shop that you could send stuff in. I don't know if he still does that. He probably still does. But as he built out his capabilities, added stuff like mills to be able to do this kind of knurling, he, um, he turned it into a full-fledged knife shop. And so now he partners with folks like Brian, and when they do drops, um, he'll get an entire batch, not a big batch, but a batch sent to him. He'll do all of this really wild, beautiful uh, custom work on it, and then sell these directly on his Fanatic Edge website. And I gotta say, holy crap, this is so well done. This is some of the cleanest, brightest, most vivid, just beautiful, mod work I've ever seen. It's so, so good. So I've, I've never handled anything from him in person before and wow, holy crap. Okay. So, um, let's, yeah, let's talk more about this blade. This is one of the things that I absolutely loved about this knife. This is, this is the, what made it such a me knife. I was worried at first, that this was going to be too long of a blade for me. And Brian, that's because Brian talks about this as being a three and a half inch knife. 
And I was really surprised, like, because when I had this in hand for first, if you see in my unboxing, I was like, oh, wait, this actually feels way more me size than I was expecting. I typically like knives that are in the kind of the three to three and a, a quarter inch. And so I thought three and a half inch would be too big. The reason why that's happening is because of how we're measuring. So I talked with Brian about this and he said the way that he's getting three and a half inches, and sure enough, I hold up to a ruler, we'll do it, is by measuring this full exposed blade length. And he said that that's how people told him he wants it measured. And you know, the thing is, is if you're going from a legality perspective, cops are allowed to measure however the hell they want. So don't don't hope that a cop's gonna go from one part or another, they might just lay it across their palm. But yeah, if you measure from this part down here to this tip, you've got three and a half inches. I don't normally measure that way. I normally measure from the front of the, the handle here. And partly that's because that kind of co coincides with where I tend to hold knives and where I tend to have my hand. And so I think about blade length from the tip of the handle out because that kind of gives me a sense more of like uh, weighting and, and balance and stuff like that. And if you measure from here, this is only three and an eighth inch. And that's that's much smaller. That is actually smack dab in the middle of that three to three and a quarter inch range that I wanted. And so that's why in a pinch grip like this, this feels exactly the size I want. This is in the end, exactly a me size knife. And I'm so freaking happy about that. I talked to them all about this and made sure that this is indeed how they are going to be on the next production run too. It's not like they change size or anything like that. So again, I get why you'd call it a three and a half inch knife, but if you measure here, it's a three and an eighth inch. Okay, so this grind, oh my God. Okay, I think it's gonna show even better if I have it like this. Yeah, look at that. First of all, I have quite a few knives that have a um, a hollow grind and then a swedge on top. And one of the side effects of that, and like one of the reasons why I get them is because they create this really cool shape up here where it comes down in and then swoops down. And my God, I just think that looks so freaking cool. Ugh. So what this is, is a very aggressive hollow grind. This blade stock is reasonably thick uh, by my standards. It's not thick by like custom knife standards and it's not thick by like beefy knife standards, but I'm I'm the type of person that tends to buy knives that are, I mean, I buy like TRMs and they're, 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 they're uh, 0.09 in, uh, inch blade stock, 90 thousandths. This is so much bigger than that. This is um, a, a much more kind of standard uh, four millimeter 0.159, like 0.16 practically blade stock. And when I, again, when I see th blade stock this thick, I tend to worry that a knife won't be slicey. But the way that you make a knife with that blade stock slicey is by putting a grind on it like this. This is such a good hollow grind. And also look at that machine satin finish there. Rayot does really, really good hollow grinds. And this one is tall enough. This is um, point eight, three inches that this thing comes very thin behind the edge and is just stays thin for a really long distance. This thing comes to about 17 thousandths behind the edge. And if you look, okay, so like I, I cut with this Raptor, when I cut with it, it, this grind height, this is also a hollow grind here. And this grind height being just a little bit shorter, it's about um, 0.68 inches down here and 0.7 up there. It's not a big difference, but it's, it's shorter enough that you do kind of feel that it, it, it hits at an earlier point. And so here, this being taller means that, yeah, it just, it just spreads that thinness out for a little bit longer. And this ends up feeling that really like you can kind of almost feel like your fingers are touching as you run along the bottom feel. Oof. Okay, so this comes to such a precise tip that it is so good at little detail work. I can so easily choke up here, put my finger right up here on the end. And uh, something that a lot of swedges do, you can see that this wedge s starts here and comes down to the end. A lot of swedges will, will make this be a full on edge you're pressing against, and it's pretty thin right here, but it's still a flat. And so that means that you can put your finger on the edge and it doesn't feel like quite like you're pushing right on um, something quite so jabby. But in this grip, man, you can get such like, excellent control with this edge. I've found this to be so incredibly good at these kind of little detailed getting into corners. It's so good at piercing into stuff. It's like, I do a lot of box opening and also kind of like, you know, like sealed uh, clamshell -y style or shrink wrappy style plastic stuff. And it's so good at getting the little nooks and cutting around things. I, I adored cutting with this knife. 
This thick enough of a blade stock does mean that if you're pushing through something that's extremely dense, like double or triple walled cardboard, it will wedge a little bit, but most times that you're cutting through stuff, the stuff's willing to kind of open up. And what I've found is that this incredibly thin blade down here enters so easily that this shreds through cardboard. And especially if you're cutting with anything that just isn't ever going to go up that high, like if you're cutting through rope or something like that, um, this kind of edge means that you're going to stay thin for so long that it just glides effortlessly through stuff. I, I have been very, very pleased with the way that this cuts. <clears throat> Um, down here on this edge here, you can see, and I, this this particular one in my hand actually has a very slight recurve. I don't think that's normal. I've looked up a bunch of other pictures, and I can't find anyone else that has that. But this one actually curves down just ever so slightly at the end to give it like the most mild hawkbill look of all time. But I again, I don't. I, this is I think Brian's custom knife. I don't. I mean private personal knife. I don't know if he has sharpened it at all. I don't know if that's the cause of this. I don't know if this came from the factory, but I don't expect it to have this very mild recurve. But if you put this on a flat surface, you can see the little bit of gap in between. Now, coming back to the edge of this blade, the end, this is one of the very few things that I think they could slightly improve upon, and that's the how aggressive this plunge grind is, or I guess maybe how unaggressive this plunge grind is. The plunge grind is the, the, the grind that takes it from the full thickness down to the thinnest behind the edge. And so the, the, if this were a very steep drop off, it would mean that you would have more distance here to be able to sharpen. And instead what we have is a pretty gradual taper that ends basically right at the edge of this. And if you look, I don't know, can I get it? Yeah, you can kind of see it's already developing the absolute tiniest little bit of smile, but that means that you go to sharpen this again, you're going to start getting more and more of a smile. And it's not the end of the world. You have a plunge grind. I mean, you have a plunge right, sorry, you have a sharpening choil at all, and that's great. Um, but it does mean that like they could have done it just a little bit more aggressive and giving you more room to sharpen. However, this actually works really, really nicely as a place to put your finger. Uh, this isn't like a full on choil. And I do have on the smaller side of fingers, I don't have tiny fingers, but I do have on the smaller side, but this actually fits so nicely up here. I wasn't expecting it to. Part of the reason for that is that this is cut off at an angle right there. This edge here doesn't come straight down. What that means is if you push your finger up like this, it's not going to do a tiny little puncture wound into the bottom of your, your, your finger there. And so I was really surprised to find just how comfortable it is to choke up on this flipper tab version. But I want to be able to choke up, period. And so I personally got the version of this that doesn't have a flipper tab. Um, and the reason I did it entirely because I want to be, I'm, I know that if a knife has a hole, I'm going to want to flick it with the hole rather than use some other method of opening. And I wanted the opportunity to curl my hand over this. What I can say though, is that if you are on the fence and you think you want multiple deployment methods, this is actually a lot more comfortable than I was expecting to wrap around. And so you can actually curl your finger over this and it's wide enough and has this really delightful chamfer on the edge that this actually doesn't suck. It would certainly be more comfortable if this wasn't here, but yeah, this is actually surprisingly comfortable to do. And like I said, you can just lean your finger up into this top part here, especially if you're kind of choked back a little bit and want to do a pinch grip like that or pinching down kind of grip like that. And this actually works surprisingly well. This is also a knife that just fits really, really nicely in a pinch grip because you can rest your finger on this nice flat. And by the way, do you see that? Those that's kind of hand satiny back. Anyway, and this, yeah, your finger can anchor right here into this spot. This little nook right here is perfect anchor point. And yeah, this just feels really, really locked in. This is one of the ways that I use this the most. It's so freaking good for utility cuts and just fits great. I, I, <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it for that. But it fits great in a lot of different grips. I have medium-sized glove hands, um, maybe on the slightly smaller of that. I don't really know. But um, I find that my two fingers fit in right quite well right here. If I had bigger hands, I think it'd be fine to choke back and, and um, kind of fill up this whole spot and let your finger roll off the back. But for me, this feels fine. And being able to roll up on this means this feels really great too. And like I said, holding it like that, that feels really great. One thing you'll notice is that there's no jimping at the top here, and I personally prefer that. I There are times where people want jimping, I get it, especially if you're using gloves or whatnot, but I'm the type of person that uses my knives without gloves, and I normally find that jimpings are just kind of, I find that jimping is just kind of like a, 
It's usually an excuse for bad ergos. It usually means that the knife isn't locked in your hand enough that you're worried about slipping. I, that's a, I know people are going to disagree with me about that, but I find that if you can get away with a knife and having it feel really, really locked in your hand and without jimping, I much, much prefer that. And that's what they've done here. So I adore that. Um, this handle design is also like, um, I'm not the type of person that normally will use any other grip. I'll sometimes use this kind of reverse straw cut grip if I'm like cutting rope. Um, I will also sometimes use this type of grip, uh, whatever you'd call that. I don't remember. And if I'm like stabbing into like a bag of soil in my, my um, yard and pulling backwards, and I don't normally do these type of things, but this is really quite comfortable in all of this. And part of the reason why all of these, including this choked up grip is so comfortable is because of this flipper tab design. It's, it's lobbed off down here in this way that just means it doesn't get in your way anywhere. All of these grips work like that because that flipper tab is not bugging you. I... Let's just talk about that flipper tab for a moment because I was not expecting to like this flipper tab. Let me rephrase. I wasn't expecting this flipper tab to work well. I love low profile flipper tabs, but normally when I find a flipper tab that is sitting right above the pivot and kind of angled back like this, they don't tend to work very well. You don't tend to have great um, uh, kind of purchase on it, and you typically don't tend to have a whole lot of distance that you can travel. It usually works better if they're leaning forward, because then you can maintain contact for a longer period of time as this goes below. But the reality is, this flipper tab is amazing. And that's part of the thing that I'm so glad I got to check out, because like I said, I got the version without the flipper tab, and so I'm so glad I now know how good this flipper tab is. It works really, really well. And part of that is this really perfect jimping. This is exactly the kind of jimping you want on a flipper tab. It is shallow, but sharp. And what that means is it doesn't hurt to press on, but boy, does it grip. And that means that you can absolutely just pull straight back, light switch this. Like it grips well enough, and this angle is just right that you can, yeah, get a really great grip. You're never going to slide off. A true just dragging light switch action works without any downward force. But this angle means that, so I said it's right above the flipper tab. And so sometimes um, uh, push buttoning type action looks like you're going to push like this. This isn't where you push. You push here. And that means that your angle of force is right down here. And so this actually works really, really fantastically as a push button too. I don't know which one I like better. I think I tend to do that more, which is kind of like a rolling push button. But is, yeah, it just works fantastically. And then being flattened like that means that it both aesthetically kind of works with the shape of the knife, but also just gets out of your way. So I'm going to say like right off the bat, this is one of my favorite. I was expecting not to like it. And this is one of my favorite flipper tabs ever. So I'm, a, I'm I mean, there's part of me that's a little bit disappointed that I didn't uh, get this version, but no, I'm not. And the reason is because oh, I love that. This is a middle finger flicking knife dream. Oh, it is so freaking good. I love it. It's exactly where you want it to be. When you hold it in your hand, it's like you, you hit right and you curl your finger back down. You hit right into this spot, this little nook right here. But this is so good. You can flick it from anywhere. And it means that you have also, oh, I'm terrible at, at thumb flicking knives, but uh, whole knives. It works so well as a thumb flicking knife too. Ah. Oh. It just works so well. They have this really, really great chamfer right here. That means that it doesn't drag across your nail. I will find, I mean, it doesn't drag bad. What I do find is that satin finish knives do drag my nail still a little bit, if it even has a 45, because it's a crisp 45 degree angle. So on my particular one, when I get it in the mail, I'm probably going to take a diamond file in and ever so slightly grind this down, like this tiniest little bit. I have a video on my channel about how I did that on a different Rayot built knife with a 45 degree bevel there. And it's, it's really, really minor. But the reality is that most people probably have thicker or harder nails than I do, and it won't be a problem. But you can also just push with the meat of your finger, and it's not a problem at all. It is so enjoyable to flick. Also, are you hearing the noises this makes? I love the sounds it makes. Part of what that's going on here is that it just has this really good click and displace thing. There's, it's got pretty early uh, detent engagement. We'll talk about that in a moment. But that means that you, the clicks that you get are down are pretty close together. And so you don't hear like the click click like you do on some. It's a very kind of almost singular 
click thing that's happening. And, and then the other part of it is that this blade is so thin that it just tings. It rings in this really delightful way, like a tuning fork or like a bell. And when you combine them together, you get this really, really nice kind of almost mechanical ratchety sound. It just, I'm telling you, it's one of my favorite sounding knives. It sounds very industrial, very mechanical, very just, ooh, very present. If, you, if you're if you a person that likes knife sounds at all, I'm telling you, this one so, so good on that front. As far as closing action goes, I said that the, ang uh, the ang angle of engagement and uh, of the detent ball is really, really good. What I'm talking about here is how far do you have to close it before while you're up on the lock bar, but haven't actually gone onto the detent ball yet. And we're, we're at almost exactly 10 degrees. That's how far. And that's really, really good. I'd say industry average Industry average is about 20 degrees, and that's what we're hitting here on the Raptor. And this is um, the level you get on either people that really are paying attention to it or have just dialed it into the process. We Civivi surprisingly does a Civivi, like the budget knife version, does surprisingly good at that. It does about 9, 10 degrees in all of their knives almost. But it's very rare to find, even across like Rayot built knives, something that has that early of a detent. Why that matters is because it's how... Um, how far you have to close that blade before you're clear of that detent ball and allows you to just kind of um, shake it home. You'll see that it didn't just fall there for a moment. And that's part of what's going on there is that this knife has a detent ball ramp. This one didn't. So I was kind of surprised to find that this one did. It's not a tremendously big detent ball ramp. Can I show you? It's right there. Do I have anything pointy? I don't think I do. Just a second. Yeah, it's right there. So it's not a very deep one. And so as a result, this isn't the perfect detent ball ramp implementation because you still have to bump up onto the tang sum to get onto the ramp at all. But it helps. Any amount of detent ball ramp is going to help. And the result is that it's just easier to close this one than it is, say, this one. But this also has a long enough detent ball ramp. Where is the end? right about there, that has a pretty smooth transition to get off. The one consequence of that is that when you, um, if, if you are closing a knife with a detent ball ramp and you're still on the ramp, like right now I'm still on the ramp, and if I try to shake it home, it's going to want to bounce back up. And that's because, you know, the, the pressure on the lock bar is going to want to push the blade back open. So what this, what detent ball ramps are great for is they make it easy for you to close it enough that you're up on the tang. That's super easy to push a close like that. And then from there, it shakes home super easily. Now, this one doesn't drop as freely shut as this one does. This thing, the geometry, puts this um, so much meat out here at the tip, and this blade is longer. This one's three and three eighths inches measuring the same way. They're both listed as three and a half inch blades, but this one is uh, a full quarter of an inch longer from the end here. And as a result, this one has more uh, more length and more meat at the end. So this one, man, this one just like truly falls free without you know any coaxing at all. This is like an actual free fall of its own weight knife, and this definitely is not. This is one of those ones that is like a little bit shake, but it's so smooth and effortless. And if you're trying to close it. Like, it closes super duper easy. So, uh, I mean, I'm underneath a, a camera right now, so I don't have a lot of room. If I'm doing this uh, in normal life, it's, I never, I never once have it not close all the way. And so I'm, I'm imp really impressed by that, in part because this is a reasonably strong lock bar. It's not the strongest, but it's, you know, you press on it. And so it's, I'm impressed that it's able to close that freely. But another thing you get here is just really, really delightfully smooth action. This feels so good as it's closing. And I haven't taken this apart and tuned it and done anything weird to this. Um, this is just how it came to me. Now this is Brian's knife. I don't know what he's done to it, but um, uh, except the one thing I did do, he sent this to me with this really, really cranked down. And so I backed this out just about a 16th of a turn, barely visible turn at all. And now that's what makes it so incredibly free falling like this, but we're still absolutely dead centered and absolutely 
bank vault locked. That's one of the things I really love about Rayot's builds, especially on frame locks, and especially if those knives have a slightly uh, thicker blade stock like this, is these things just feel tanky in this really fantastic way. They feel so secure and locked up. There's no semblance of movement at all. And I love that. And yet even on that, you can get a knife that falls that easily. Wow, that's incredible. Okay. Um, Talking about this pivot for a moment, this uh, is a, a pivot collar on the outside right there. It's not just like a shape like that. And the way that they did this, this one has a captive pivot. It's done in a really cool way. But Brian actually did a disassembly and said it and uh, showed how this all works himself. So I'm just going to let him say it in his own words. And what they've done is absolutely perfect. On the show side, you've got two alignment holes, two little tiny pins there that match up with the collar. And you can tell on the collar, that's not a round hole. So you can see inside here, the two little uh, alignment pins. They pop down into the frame and then they've got the square hole in that pivot, in that pivot collar, which matches up with the bottom of the pivot here. So that way it's got that machine square on the bottom. And then that way, whenever you line it back up, it all just pops down in there. Has very little wiggle. That way it's a lot easier to disassemble these than having it all flush and just free spinning. Yeah, that's really neat. That's one of my favorite ways that you could do that. I love when um, a something about the 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 show side itself is what's keeping it captive. It's so much nicer than when it's a, a D shape all the way through because then gunk can get in that little nook and that, that cut out of the D between the blade and the, the pivot. And it's also nicer than the kind that's a D shape just on the other end. That's, that's my second favorite, but that means that you have some kind of alignment issues on the other side. This style is so good because there's only one way you can go in and you have no concern about wiggling things around on this side to get a line up and it all just works. Everything is just perfect. So this is my absolute favorite kind of pivot. So moving back here to this backspacer. This is so cool. This is one of the things I think is really, really nice about this knife. And it's it's just a really cool added touch. It's crowned the entire way. It feels so nice. And it looks just really, really classy. The one thing that does make me wish is that this was a crown spine. I actually love this spine exactly how it is, but if it were a crown spine, it would really kind of just tie in thematically this whole way. I think that would just look really, really nice. So uh, I don't know if he'll ever think to do that or agree to do that, but that'd be something I think would be really cool to see in the future. It also though works nicely as a guard for the finger. Uh, this is one of those things where you can slide your finger in your pocket around to get it, like your keys, your wallet, or whatever you have in here. Probably not keys if you have a beautiful anna job like this, but whatever you're, you're, you're up against, if this is in the back of your pocket, yeah, you're getting nothing. No, no possible exposure to that blade edge right all. And I, I love that. That's such a good, that's such a good design. Moving back here to this, um, this show side, I mean, the clip side here. First of all, let's look at that. I love that. Did you notice earlier that there's just no markings on this blade whatsoever? I adore that. I hate billboarding on knives. I think it is such a detractor. And when you have a knife that is so striking in its angles like this, anything that detracts from that would just be really, really sad. So I love to see the maker's mark hidden down here in this little crevice. I think that's just a very elegant, clever way of hiding it, but still having his cool logo on there to, for people to see. Now it's right next to this clip, and the clip design is very similar to the kind you have on the uh, Raptor over here. Now, uh, one thing I love is that they are aligned with the flow of the knife. So like on the Jaeger, it's a straightforward thing, uh, knife, and so it's a straight aligned 
clip. Over here is a swoop up back, and so it's a swoop up clip. I think that just really ties it in. At first, I thought that this swoop down didn't quite match with how angular the rest of the knife is, but it actually really perfectly echoes this swoop right here. In fact, it might even be the exact same curve, and so that actually does work really, really nicely. One thing I wish that he did differently on this clip, and heck, maybe he will for the next ones, but probably not, um, that he did instead do better over here is spread that clip distance out a little bit. If we look at the contact pad, you can see that on this one, it is a single point right there. Now, it's not like a single point this dimension, it's this whole width right there, which is great. But over here, he's spread that out to be just a little bit longer of a contact distance. And I really like that because I find that when it's a pad rather than a point of contact or like a line of contact, that, that when you have good clip retention like this, this just slides in and out of your pocket just a hair easier. But this clip does work really, really well. I just find that, yeah, it, it's, it's just a little bit more likely to bunch up your, your uh, especially if you're wearing like thin, flexible something, like, um, I, I don't know, like just thinner pants. Uh, it's slightly more likely to bunch up on this than this, but this is still an extremely well-functioning clip. I will say I would rather it be deep carry. I'll always rather it be deep carry. The only way that he could make this deeper and still be milled tie is if he spread this out and made it so that these screws could go vertically, I mean, or I guess that'd be vertically this way instead of horizontally like that. And that would allow him to make the contact point um, uh, have its, its width, I mean, it's, it's like breadth of contact in that dimension, and that would allow you to get a little bit deeper. But I don't know, if you look at how much is sticking out, it's about that much. It's, you know, it's not the best, it's not the worst, but at least it, it's a, like a pretty looking thing that's sticking out. The clip is really cool looking. And if people are knife people, this is, you know, they'll recognize this as like a really, uh, like a knife that they want to be able to see. Um, the other thing is like, if you have this incredibly gorgeous Anno version, like, yeah, you're going to want those, that to show because look how freaking good that is. Yeah. Love it. Talking about these handles a little bit more though, there is um, a ton of weight relief inside on both sides. There's um, a pocket up here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. There's a pocket up here above this bar. Like this whole thing is pocketed out. This whole thing is pocketed out right there. And you can see on this side, it's all pocketed out too. And he showed in his disassembly that even on the versions that are inlaid, those still have pockets in them that are making them lighter. And that's so freaking cool. Part of what that does though, is it helps you balance this knife. And if you look at where this balance point is, it's right at the front here. And that is precisely where you want it to be in this standard grip. What you want on a knife like this is to have your, your balance point right at your index finger, then you want the weight of the handle to be distributed evenly in your hand. And what that means, if that's your balance point, then the knife feels nimble in your hand. If the, if the, the blade is too heavy, it's gonna feel like it's swinging back and forth. If it's, um, if the handle is too heavy, then you won't feel the blade as it's moving. You won't have a sense of where the tip is. But when it's like this, this is absolutely perfectly balanced. This is a little bit uh, on the heavy side of knives that I carry. This is not heavy at all. This is, but, but, but I'm again, used to like TRMs that are two and a half ounces. So this is 4.26 ounces. But what, what you're getting here is a distribution of that weight that makes this not feel heavy in your hand at all. A lot of people are going to scoff and say 4.26 ounces isn't heavy, period, and I agree with you, it's not. But I've complained about knives that are in this weight before if they weren't distributed in a way that felt good. Sometimes knives that weigh this much can feel heavy because like it's it'll be like a, too long of a tube or just the weight will feel weird, like it'll be the weight will be concentrated in the back and the entire thing will just feel odd in your hand. This doesn't do that. This takes that weight and makes it feel so incredibly intuitively, you know, like just nimble in your hand. I love that. The last thing I want to talk about with this, this handle and actually kind of finishing in general is that there are just these delightful chamfers everywhere. All of these edges have been chamfered off and have really nice edges. There's this chamfer that runs along this inside here. So this is all smooth. If so, if you are using this flipper tab version, you come down like this, this is a smooth surface to land on. It feels really nice. And yeah, there's just these great edge 
surfaces everywhere. This is a knife that feels really good, but it does stand out compared to the Raptor. The Raptor has this very curved kind of melty feel to it that feels very smooth and river stony in your hand. This is definitely um, angular. And I, I mean, that's, that's fitting the design. The blade shape is echoing like these curves back here to make it so that this, like this, you'd want this to have these kind of hard edges, but even though they're hard edges, they're not sharp edges. That's one of the things that you get um, from from someone like Rayot. They're able to do these kinds of crisp edges without them being sharp. And it's just, it feels so nice in your hand. There's such easy lock bar access here in that disengaging. That whole bevel here means that you are able to push your thumb in so well. You're able to get in on both sides and it's just so easy to push that over. And that just, yeah, everything about this just feels great in hand. So I think where I'm landing on this, like my final thoughts, is that I I am in love with this knife. Like I hoped I would like it. Aesthetically, I knew I liked it. And I was worried that it wouldn't fit my hand. That was my only real concern is that when I heard it's three and a half inches, I thought it might not fit me. But oh my God, this feels perfect. This is... <laughs> I've only had this knife for a little over two weeks now. Brian lent it my way and was said I could keep it that long, which is great. And this is already one of my absolute favorite knives I've ever handled. I, this is an incredibly me knife, both aesthetically uh, and, and ergonomically, and for the type of cutting that I do, is just so good. And so I'm so, so happy I got in on that uh, production run version, uh, the third batch. I'm thrilled that one of these is coming my way. I was really nervous that when I got this, I'd be like, oh, I love it, but it's too big and I'd have to sell it. I know I'd be able to sell it. There's a great aftermarket for these, but I'm, this is absolutely going to be a keeper for me. Um, and I got the full tie version that's just plain. And uh, that's because I'm I'm not super into that kind of... Um, camo-esque looking flat fat carbon or I don't know arctic stormy kind of fat carbon that he was using in that run I would have loved the the um paper micarta or whatever it's called I forget what it's called uh version that he did as an exclusive for his Facebook group I would have loved to have gotten that um but I'm very happy with the one that I did but I will say if you can score one of these ones done by Fanatic Edge it um Wow, the finishing work is spectacular. And this color scheme, green, you don't see green very often in knives. So having this green and gold together, this is like the perfect kind of, I don't know, St. Patrick's Day-esque knife. This is, wow. Yeah, this is fantastic. Yeah, so my final thoughts is I freaking love it. I I do. I, everyone says they love this knife, so I guess it's not surprising. But yeah, all of the details are so well done and everything just works so well and it fits so well. And yeah, I'm going to be yet another reviewer saying this is one of the best knives that I think has ever been made. So <laughs> there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys for watching. Um, Brian, thank you so much for sending these my way. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.